Hey guys, I gave a talk at Tailwind Connect this summer, introducing some new Tailwind features. The full talk was about 30 minutes, but today I wanna to show you the highlights. Hope you enjoy. One of the things that's a bummer about these native HTML controls is this kind of default blue treatment. Uh, you might not know this, but uh, we have a utility called Accent. So we can find our lime, go straight to 400, and uh, look at all this cool stuff that we get. But we don't have to do this with every single one of these, right? We can take this off, go to the root div here, and we can just add accent lime 400, just like that. And we're gonna get that for all of these controls. This has kind of a cool look to it, but I think it'd be nice if we could make this title, the heading here, kind of fill up the whole page, just like you would see in like a classic newspaper with arbitrary value syntax, we can do anything we want here. So I could set this to be 60 pixels, and we'll get 60 pixels, but I can also set it to be 10 VW. And now it's 10% of the overall width of the viewport. And so if I start changing this, we see that it kind of shrinks and it grows. So maybe let's bump this up to 19, something like that. That looks pretty good. And then when we get too big, we see that it gets too big as well. So. Uh, why don't we use another, pro another feature from CSS, which is the min function, and we're gonna make sure it never gets bigger than, let's say, 130, something like that. And so now, we can see even if our viewport gets bigger, the text stops. This is a hero treatment, something you maybe see on the home page. And we can see here when you start with this, maybe this was the intention you know, for this design, but as we kind of change the size, it's not as a pleasing distribution, right, when we have some orphan words here at the end. And so wouldn't it be cool if there was a CSS feature that took care of this for us? And it turns out there is. I'm gonna come right here to H2, and I'm gonna type balance. And I'm gonna see this text balance utility. And just like that, we've got three lines. Now we've got two, and that's it, it's done. So uh, I don't know if you've ever worked on this before, but this is so cool, right? Just to see this again, we have this kind of dangling orphaned uh, word right there, throw that on, and it just figures out it can wrap all through. Pretty cool, right? I'm right here. Uh, we have this little selector right here, just kind of a simple radio group. Now, the CEO came and said, we want these to kind of pop a little bit more, right? So we want the active class to actually be a little bit more apparent. It'd be really nice if I could do something like checked, background, indigo, 600, right? But it's not the label that's checked, it's the input. Well, CSS is adding this feature and uh, Tailwind has support for it via this has-utility. And has is saying, if I have a child that meets this condition in the brackets, then apply this class. And we know that inputs get a checked condition if they're checked, right? So now if we say, let's set the background to Indigo 600, check that out. Normally at this point, uh, to actually pull off a design like this, I'd be reaching for like React State or something, pulling that in and then figuring out which of these options as I'm mapping over them are checked and then conditionally adding classes. But we don't have to do that, just like we don't have to do it down here. We can style the input with the check pseudo class and now we can style this label with this new has relational selector. But um, our text is a little off right here. I think we can make it look a little bit better. This is the label right here, public access. And again, it would be nice if we could do something similar, right? Has, checked, and let's make this white. But this div doesn't have, it doesn't contain anything that's checked. This is actually outside of the tree that contains input. It's in a sibling tree. If we put a group on the lowest common ancestor of both of these things that need it, and then we use group has, just like this, now we can apply that. And we can do the same thing right down here to soften up this text. Let's say group has checked. And we're going to make this text indigo 200. So now that's looking a lot better. I'm right here. So right now we have this single column grid, right? And once we get to a certain size, we turn it into a two column grid. And um, let's say that we want to make the first testimonial kind of pop a little bit more. Okay, well, one way we could do that is to make this take up two columns on the bigger screen. So we might come here to this div, call span two. This gives every testimonial spans both columns in the grid, right? And if we only wanted it for the first one, you can actually do it with just the first 
prefix in Tailwind. Check that out, pretty cool, right? Now, we actually want to change the treatment because it looks a little bad when it takes up that much space. The text is a little small. It needs a little bit more breathing room. And so at this point, normally I would solve this problem by doing something like exposing a featured prop, right? So we would say featured, and then maybe we would grab the index again and say, okay, this is featured if we're the first uh, in the array. And then we could go into testimonial and use the new prop to give it the new treatment. But with container queries, we don't have to do this. So let me show you how this works. We're gonna go into testimonial. I'm gonna add a class to the root right here, and I'm gonna mark this as container. Well, if I come to this block quote, I can say, at LG, let's go ahead and bump up the text size to text XL. And so what's happening here is this card is taking up more than 32 rems, so it's getting that new treatment. But once we make it small, the first testimonial takes up the same amount of space as every other testimonial, so it gets the same treatment. But let's go and uh, keep going here. Text large, let's make it um, font semi-bold. And uh, at large, let's make the tracking a little bit tighter. And let's just say when we're large, let's go ahead and make P10, padding 10, maybe space Y8 for large. And uh, yeah, that's starting to look pretty nice. And again, if we come down to where we're rendering this, if I go back to odd instead of just first, you get the idea. We've made the testimonial render the appropriate version of itself based on the space. And so the caller doesn't know, caller doesn't care. However, this card is rendered. Whether we're on a small screen or a big screen, it doesn't matter the overall screen size. What matters is how much space the container has. Um, let's do one more thing, actually. I'm gonna come drop an image right there, which I think looks good on this featured one, but these, it doesn't have enough space. So let's actually start this out as hidden. And then if we're in a large enough container, we'll go ahead and bring it back to block. So pretty cool. Um, I think container queries, once how to use them becomes more common knowledge. I think they're going to replace a lot of the work we did with media queries. And uh, just one more cool little thing I want to show you. If we zoom out here, we kind of get this uh, four column grid. And uh, now our treatment looks a little bit funny. So let's actually move it over with first XL. We're actually going to start this column at two. And uh, this looks pretty cool, but you can see there's kind of some awkward spaces in this layout, and it would be really cool if we could get rid of them. Well, there's another really awesome feature coming to CSS, and uh, let me show you how it works. I'm gonna come right here, and I'm gonna say grid rows. We can set our own using the arbitrary value syntax, and check this out. Masonry, if you've ever tried to build this before, especially in a way that is robust to a responsive layout like this, you know it is much, much harder than adding a single class. And uh, now we have this really cool layout, and all of the space in between uh, is even, even though we have different height cards in the columns. So uh, those are some really cool things that you can do with modern Tailwind. I love all the stuff I've learned about CSS since using Tailwind, and I also love that you can experiment with it using this arbitrary syntax. So uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to dive deeper into Tailwind, I have a full course where we build a Discord clone from scratch using Tailwind. So check a link in the description for that. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.